Let's go into the Word of God just for a few minutes, not long, but even a few seconds in the Word of God will bear fruit in your life if you let it come into the fiber of your being. Not only hear it with your brain, but let your heart hear it. So chapter 4 of the book of Hebrews, which I believe was written by the Apostle Paul. We could go into a large debate on that uh, because people dispute that. Some people do, and then some people accept that fact. Uh, but there are many and uh, varied proofs that Paul did write this book, the Apostle Paul, who was tormented and tried and tested for his beliefs. Uh, today, we are tried and tested of our beliefs. Are we standing strong in our beliefs? We must stand strong in our beliefs. We must labor to be strong in our belief. As we would see here in Hebrews chapter 4. Let us, therefore, fear, fear, lest you got to have fear of God or you're going to miss out on something. Let us, the children of faith, cue us, note Q of the Bible, Take Bible, I should say. Let us, holy brethren, fear lest we come short of eternal life. That the promised here, promise here is eternal life is clear in verse 14, 9, 15, and 1 John 2, 25. Let us therefore fear lest... A promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. We don't want to come short of it. We may be professing the faith in Jesus Christ, but are we living the faith of Jesus Christ? We know the Bible says to be not only hearers of the word, but to be doers of the word. For unto us the gospel was preached. Note B. Uh, let's see if we can find it here. The gospel was preached to Abraham 430 years before the law. Scripture references. And to Israel under the law. For unto us the gospel, the good news, was preached. As well unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. There's that word pastuo again. It is an action word. It means taking action. It means having the works that goes with your faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do not enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my Wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, also the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Now we jump over to verse 11. 
warning the Christians to enter into the rest by faith and not by observing some day. Scripture references. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. God has a rest prepared for you and I. One day we shall all lay down this physical body that we are right now possessing. We will not have the ears that you're hearing me with. You will not have the eyes that you're seeing me with. They will be in a grave. You will not have the breath that you're breathing. The body will be laid into the grave to go back to the dirt from whence it came. But you and I, the soul, the essence, the inner part of the man, the spirit, the soul, will go back to God, which gave it to us. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall, notice that, fall after the same example of unbelief. Old Testament saints exhibited unbelief. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Essenes all exhibited unbelief. We got to be careful not to exhibit that unbelief in our daily walk with the Lord. Why? Because verse 12, for the word of God is quick. I think of Tyrone Powder in the movie Zorro, how he cut that Z uh, real quick. The word of God is quick and it's powerful. Dunamis, it has power. It's like nitroglycerin. It has the power to change your life. If the gospel doesn't change your life, if the word of God does not change your life, something has gone amiss because the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Sword was an offensive implement of war. You've got to use this word in a warfare in the spirit world. You have to be not only a hearer of the word, the real word, not what's being proclaimed from some of the nation's pulpits today. Even some of the major, major churches and denominations are preaching a watered-down form. You got to have the real, unadulterated word of God. Why? Because it's powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Two-edged, it goes cutting when you throw out, and it cuts when you pull back in. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. and of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The word of God is a discerner. It lets the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost of God, convict you of your sin. This is a standard. This is God instruction manual for you and I today. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus Christ laid down his life on the cross of Calvary. He hung there for six hours for you and I. He endured all of the shaming that man could put upon him. But then when they laid him in his tomb, whoo, on the third day he rose again to the newness of life, the first fruits of the resurrection. Seeing then that we have a high priest, Jesus is our high priest, it's not some pope somewhere or another. 
It's not uh, a head of a denomination somewhere or another. It's not even your pastor. It's not you, even. It is Jesus Christ, who is our high priest, that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, the only begotten of God. Let us hold fast our profession. You got to hold fast. You got to stand. You got to labor. You got to be on fire for God. And the only way you can be on fire for God is to put the fuel that God gave you in his instruction manual to you and I today. I'm not only talking to you, I'm talking to me too. I get lazy and slothful sometimes, just like anybody else. Sometimes I feel too tired to read. But then I get to thinking about Jesus Christ. How tired was he in between uh, the times when his body would rivet up and he would feel the pain of the median nerve and then his body would convulse down and he would feel the pain of the spikes in his feet and the crown of thorns shoved down on his head. All of those things. You know, on the uh, thread here, or the site, whatever you want to call it, this YouTube channel, we have Dr. Gerald Bradley's medical MD uh, explaining the death of Jesus Christ, what it must have been like. So today, let's don't discri uh, discount what Jesus Christ accomplished for you and I. He didn't die so that you could live in sin and sin more or less a little bit every day and still make it to heaven. No, he died so that you could have an abundant life, an overcoming life. But you got to labor to have it. We love you from Kentucky. We ask you to check us out on Facebook at Cross of Christ Ministries. Uh, we're on... Uh, Tumblr, we're on uh, uh, Rumble. Uh, we're here on YouTube. If you need prayer, you let us know. We'll be sure to pray for you. We love you. And God, we love you. And we ask that you bless your word to somebody, someone that needed to hear that today. God bless you. From Kentucky, get into your word, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen.